What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. After Sound here, bringing you Splinterlands content every single day. We also stream right here on this channel every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday morning. So come by and say hello. All right, guys. Well, people have been asking for more gameplay content, so let's do some. I'm going to give you my top three most underrated Chaos Legion cards. And this is specifically the Chaos Legion Core Edition. Uh, and so I, again... I'm going to qualify this by saying that these are three cards that generally aren't considered meta, but since I play uh, manually in bronze and I play manually in diamond, I've found these cards to be very effective and I've started to see them even be used a lot more, especially at the lower levels, and wanted to cover them here just because, uh, again, I mean, they're, they're cards that I'm seeing and people don't generally talk about them being super overpowered, but they do have a lot of value. And here's the thing. I know many people are probably not going to agree, so I think that's actually going to be the fun part. I would love to know what your top three would be. But let's go ahead and jump in. The first one is going to be Venari Spellsmith. And the reason this guy is uh, so important, my, my, uh, this is not a ranking, but if I, guess, I guess if I had to rank it, I would put him number one, is because of the Dispel ability at level one and the fact that Venari Spellsmith is a neutral card. Now, why is Dispel so important at level one? Well, because with the Soulbound Reward cards, specifically the Soulbound Reward Summoners coming into play and bringing Gladiators into ranked play, one thing that the Dispel ability can do is remove any buffs from Bloodlust that are uh, acquired over time. That's something that Venari Spellsmith has at level one, and I've seen it a ton in bronze. When you get to the higher levels, I think the other the other value here at silver is you get a neutral amplify, meaning that you can play this with any element, if, uh, just in case you don't have the uh, um, just in case you don't have the amplify. I think each each element has its own amplify, but to have it for for neutral in case you can't play that specific card or you don't have that specific card, I think comes in really handy, especially considering the fact that we have the thorns. Uh, Magic Reflect and Return Fire rule sets that were added in earlier this year too. You can you can put in Amplify at that level. Uh, when you get to the higher levels, you do get Redemption, which is cool. I don't even have mine maxed out. I have mine maxed for gold still. Maybe maybe gold. No, where where, where is mine? <laughs> I'm just curious. Uh, I have mine oh, only maxed for silver. So I, I need to I need to start working my way up with this card. But it's definitely one that I've seen used a lot more, especially at the lower levels. The second card, and let's go back to the market here, the second card that uh, I would say is quite underrated is River Nymph. Now, this is a card that I actually did max out. And keep in mind, I'm playing, at least with this account, at the, uh, at the highest levels in Diamond Plus. And the main thing with River Nymph and why I believe it's, it's so popular even at the lower levels is because you get the cleanse ability. And the thing is, in Bronze, the poison rule set, for example, can be so devastating, or Waka can be so devastating, right? Poison, affliction, all these things can can uh, come into play, and there's very few cards at level one that have cleanse. So the fact that you get this at level one, and you could, you know, you even get it as a starter card essentially, is quite powerful. And then same thing with Amplify, you do get this in silver as well, so it's similar to Venari Spellsmith. But the reason I maxed mine out is because at the highest levels, you get swiftness. And, you know, speed is the meta in this game. And I noticed that there were certain games in Diamond that I would lose to because I would, I'd, I'd just be a step slower. And I'd be playing River Nymph, right? I'd be playing River Nymph for the Amplify ability or for Magic or whatever. And, you know, she pairs well, especially with someone like Jin O'Shaughness, right? Where, who, has, uh, who has the Phase and Void ability. So adding that speed, in addition with Kelia is super, super powerful. And this is one that I had to max out. So again, something that I found to be valuable at all levels. Now, the last one that I'll share here with you is actually going to be an epic card. And oh, let's let's go to market again, because, and the reason I like going to the market is because you can see, I, I, I sort it by the price. So you can see where the market kind of values these cards. You can see that I'm scrolling down kind of to the you know bottom half. And that's Dax Paragon. Now, here's the thing. I have not maxed my Dax Paragon because I just suck at maxing out my... <laughs> I just suck at maxing out all my epic cards. But the reason Dax Paragon is important, or at least valuable, is because you actually can get the Amplify ability at level 2, which is eligible in Bronze. Now, this may not be as valuable because we had... Um, we had uh, Grandmaster Wraith, the legendary summoner for Chaos Legion, come out and have the Amplify ability built in. But then we also had, <laughs> then we also had, uh, gosh, I forgot the the Return Fire Summoner 
um, for, oh gosh, now, now the name is escaping me for rift watchers, the return fire summoner. What is her name? Uh, let's go to summoners and it's gotta be, oh gosh. Well, this is embarrassing, but let's just go through return fire summoner or Ilthane. There you go. So Ilthane is a, the summoner that I was thinking of. With, with that, with all the different rule sets as we had discussed earlier across the board, Thorns, Amplify, or Thorns, Return Fire, and Magic Reflect, he's somebody that you can get because you can play with Ilthane. You can play him with Lux Vega, for example. Again, I don't know how many people will be uh, renting Lux Vega at the, the lower levels, but you can also play him with the new Soulbound Summoners and have those rule sets, uh, sets still be impactful because of the amplifiability. And I do believe he's one of the only monster, like he, he's the only unit and therefore life is the only element that can actually get the amplifiability at the bronze level. So that's why, you know, again, I, I think it's just a, a super powerful card. Let's try to go back here, not own soulbound. Oh, we want to go back to market. Um, Cause I want to take a quick look at the higher levels for him. So let's go back to Epic and here we go. The other the other ability that he has, which again, I don't have, but it's been used against me a ton, is Affliction. Because there's not much Affliction in the Life Splinter. So at the higher levels, he's somebody that I always come, I always have problems with because he's usually going to stop any kind of healing. And Life tends to have a lot of healing available to it. So to have an Affliction always available, and for two mana, not bad either. To be able to do that at the highest levels, I think that this is one card that probably gets overlooked a lot. I know that I've been overlooking it. You can clearly see that I'm not prioritizing it, but I can recognize that it beats me in a lot of games. And again, none of these cards are meant to be like super meta at the end of the day. It's it's just cards that I think are in, you know, as, as I said, they're, they're not necessarily like uh, in the top half, they're not necessarily part of the, the everyday conversation of cards that are going to win you a ton of games, but they are cards that, you know, in, in terms of like where they rank in their class, I do think offer a lot of value, especially with a lot of changes that we've had in the game. But I'm curious to know, what would be your top three? Do you agree with me? Because I highly doubt it. But if you don't agree with me, I would love to know what your top three are. And you can include any rarity. I, I didn't include any uh, legendaries, but that's because I felt like these could actually be much more impactful. But I'm very curious to hear your thoughts. So we'll continue the conversation in the comments below. I will catch you all in the next video and see you around the game. Take care.